Hey folks, Dust here, and I want to do another update that I do every few months. Just kind of keep some of my followers and stuff updated on what's been going on with me and what's going to be going on next. And so I thought I would do a video for the end of 2018, kind of talk about my 2018 a little bit and just think a little bit forward as well. So this year I am done events here in December, and I did 10 LAN events this year. I started back in March and April when I was in Kiev working with Starlighter doing the Chongqing Invitational as well as Betsnet Masters. Then I had a break for a couple of months until June where I did DreamHack Summer and DreamHack Austin pretty much back to back. And then right after that, pretty quickly went into Zotac EU and Zotac North America. I think I worked every weekend in June, actually. So it was a really busy month for me. And it kind of bled a little bit into the beginning of July with that Zotac NA event. Then I had a break for a couple of months until I did DreamHack Montreal in September. Then I did WESG Canada and WESG USA for a couple of events here in October and November. And then also in November to end the year, I did DreamHack Atlanta. Most of these gigs were analyst desk gigs with the exception of me doing some commentary for the WESG stuff as well as I think I commentated at the Chongqing Invitational and I also commentated at DreamHack Austin actually now that I think about it so I don't know it's kind of an even split but leaned a little bit more towards more analyst desk gigs this year whereas kind of last year I did a lot more casting because I was doing a little bit with Vince and he's obviously decided to retire for now so I've kind of pivoted into doing more analyst desk work this year but in reality it's just kind of been more of like what people want from me you know I, I'm very flexible I'm very open to, to you know what roles people want to put me in and obviously being flexible like that is in my best interest to you know give me the the best opportunity to to get gigs and things like that and I've always kind of had that mentality of just you know people approach me with what role they have in mind that they want me to do and I just kind of take it in stride and do my best with it. I certainly prefer doing color commentary and analysis. Those are like my two favorite things to do, but I don't mind doing play by play commentary. I don't mind doing interviews. I don't mind doing desk hosting or what have you, but I just drift towards the more analytical stuff like color commentary and desk analysis. I think that's where my strengths lie. But again, you know, being open mind is definitely what I need to be. I also did a couple of online things this year. Uh, most recently, I did a lot of stuff for the Mountain Dew League. Uh, for their most recent season but i did do some other smaller online stuff throughout the year as well now this is compared to 2017 where i did eight LAN events or traveled eight times i should say i actually technically did 10 last year as well because i did some remote commentary for masters malmo and wesg europe uh, but i only traveled eight times last year versus here i traveled 10 times and this is a you know, a pretty big increase from 2016 where I only traveled to five LAN events, but I also did some studio work for ECS and I did TwitchCon. So I kind of sort of did seven events, I guess, in 2016 and then more. So eight in 2017, I guess, technically 10 if you count some of the remote work. And then this year I did straight up 10. So there has been certainly some growth each year where, you know, I've been going to more and more events uh, each year it seems to increase. Hopefully that trend will continue and I'll get to go to even more events in 2019. That's kind of the goal. But I mean, I think to kind of talk a little bit about goals going into next year is I haven't done a tier one event since E-League season one back in 2016, as far as physically attending a tier one event. You know, I, I was a part of the initial season of E-League. That was a big mark in my career. Again, it, it was me kind of coming in as a replacement for Thorne while he was sorting out visa issues. So uh, there was a little bit of a, a special case attached to it. But <clears throat> nonetheless, it was a big opportunity, certainly jump started my career as a desk analyst and, and as more of like an analytical guy, even with color commentary, I suppose, though, my focus really was desk work through the early part of 2016. So with that in mind, I really want to get to a tier one event again. I just want an opportunity to work at what is considered a tier one event, you know, where all the top teams are present, where there's a really good tournament format, where, you know, the prize money is huge, where a lot of the other top talent are there. You know, I really want to be a part of one of those. I really do think that I would do a great job. I think I proved that at E-League season one, and I think I proved that with all the tier two and tier three, whatever you want to label them events I've been doing over the past couple of years, you know, so hopefully I can get an opportunity to be at like a DreamHack Masters or an ESL one or an IEM or, you know, just any tier one event you can think of. So I really, really hope that that'll work out for me in 2019. But I think the bigger goal is just to work more consistently. I need less big breaks between gigs. I need to get out there more, do more consistent work. I mean, right now, the only person that I've consistently been able to work with is DreamHack, and then I've kind of dabbled with other companies here and there. So I really hope that I can get out there more because that's what I really need in order to kind of sustain myself and to keep pursuing a career as a commentator slash analyst, whatever you want to call it. I need to be able to get out there more often. I can't keep having these two-month-long gaps where I'm just kind of doing nothing. I really need to get out there more. I'm really hungry to get out there more. I'm really willing to work hard and grind and do that. I just need those opportunities. I've certainly been trying to 
keep up with research, keep up with all the games, watch as many matches as I can, keep up with, you know, stats, results, all that good stuff. So I'm ready to go if the opportunities arise. You know, I'm always prepared. But, you know, we just have to kind of see how it works out. It's not always in my control if I get hired or not, right? But I'm certainly putting myself out there. I'm certainly trying to communicate with people and, and hunting down opportunities. And definitely my door is open, you know, hit me up. You know, I think I've really proven that I have great knowledge. You know, I do a ton of research. I know about a team's tactics and overall style and strategy. I know about the recent results. I know about a player's recent form. I study, you know, teams' map pools. I can do a pick band phase really well or just keep up with the team's map pool in general. I feel like I've proven I can do that, you know, with my desk work, with my color commentary work, with the content I've done on this YouTube channel, with the content I've been a part of on other people's channels. Like when I did an episode of Counterports with Thorns, and like a lot of people received that pretty well and kind of saw what I could bring to the table. And I think that if people look past the memes and drama, I think people can see that I, I do bring a lot of knowledge to the table I think the, the biggest thing that's always been a little bit against me is the delivery, which is something I really worked hard on this year. I really worked to just be more confident in myself, to really just, you know, hey, I know my shit. Let me go out there and, and, and show people. Let me not worry about what people are saying about me or, you know, obviously, you know, look at critique. And if there is valid stuff, put it to use, but ignore all the bullshit, you know, and just kind of really be confident in myself. And I feel like I really have built that confidence over this year. I really feel like my delivery has gotten better. You know, I definitely think I could still work a lot on my delivery. I think that my talking speed at times has still been a little bit too fast, so I could really try to slow that down. I think that at the beginnings of events, I sometimes tend to have a lot of verbal fillers. I'll use the word like a lot, for instance. There is a couple other ones where the first day of an event, I just feel for whatever reason I get a little bit more hung up. And I'm not sure why that is, but, you know, I usually watch my film from the previous day, the night after it's over, before I go to work the next day. And I always notice that after day one. So that's definitely something I'm going to try to be more vigilant about right at the beginning of the tournament rather than having to wait until day two to adjust on that. So, yeah, again, I can still work on talking speed. I can work on verbal fillers and I can just work on kind of, you know, overall kind of bringing a little bit more personality to the show. You know, I think before I was just kind of regurgitating facts all the time and not really mixing with the other people I'm on the desk with or, you know, being able to kind of joke around here and there, just, you know, be more entertaining in general. And I think I really have been trying to work on that as well as camera presence and things like that as well. So I've worked on that a lot this year. I think I've improved on that a lot, but I can certainly be even better at it. And that's obviously what I hope to do next year. And also, I think that I've proven I can commentate as well. I mean, I know that my strengths lie more in analysis, but I think I've proven that I can commentate when I need to. You know, I did some, I thought, pretty decent play-by-play -play commentary at DreamHack Austin alongside Risk when I was working with him there when, you know, the pairing just kind of, it made sense for me to take over play-by-play. -play. So I think I've shown I could do that, which is also going to be important if I ever work in another game in the future to have that skill set. And I think I do. Certainly, I'm not as good as a lot of the play-by-play -play commentators out there who are a lot better than me at, you know, pacing and excitement and things like that. I think I can still do a pretty good job. Again, I do know that my strengths within CSGO lie more on the analytical side, and that's fine. I embrace that and love that. But I can commentate as well if I need to. And because I do study these teams' tactics and strategies so much, you know, watching a lot of demos and stuff, I feel like I can bring that tactical insight in the game where there's a lot more room for that type of stuff. And I really feel like I can kind of say, hey, this is what you can look out for. This is what this team likes to do. This is the adjustment this team has made recently. They've swapped this role around. Like, I'm really up to date on that stuff. And so I think that that can be valuable for a desk if there's time. But on the desk, you don't necessarily get as much time to talk about tactics, whereas in the game, commentating, I can. So I feel like I've really shown I can do this. And... Again, I think that people have received my analysis, my knowledge pretty well for the most part. Like I said, once you get past kind of the memes and the bullshit. So hopefully I can just kind of keep grinding it out, keep going. You know, obviously the, the, the clock is ticking. I, I do have to kind of figure something out. I think, you know, going into 2019, that's the year I really need to kind of figure things out. You know, I need to either figure out a way to get out there more consistently or I need to figure out a way to do something else behind the scenes on top of doing commentary to kind of keep myself financially stable or, you know, just look at other games or look in a different direction or, or whatever, you know. So that's just kind of an update on, on what I've been doing this year, kind of a comparison of what it's been like in previous years, some, some things I've been focusing on, some things I'm going to continue to focus on going forward. I really want to go all out in 2019 and be out there as much as possible. But again, it's not always up to me, you know, how much I do or when I get to do stuff, you know, I'm obviously going to try to put myself out there and, and contact people and, 
you know, inquire about opportunities, but a lot of the time it's more of people kind of come to you. And so it's kind of a waiting game in that regard. But again, I, I think I do a good job. I think I know my stuff. I think I can add a lot of value to a desk or as a color commentator. I can also fulfill other roles. I'll always be prepared. I always do my research. I always know my stuff. It's just about getting out there more and working on my delivery. Again, I think that, you know, <clears throat> I've made a lot of strides at the department, but I think I can still make even more strides with, you know, more reps in, so to speak, uh, I guess is the way to put it. Also, you know, I've been working on health because another part is looking more presentable, looking better. I mean, that that is a part of the job as well, but it's also just for me, right? Just being more healthy. And I can say that I have lost a substantial amount of weight this year. I think at my peak at the very beginning of the year or towards the very end of last year, I think I was close to 230 pounds, maybe a little bit more than that. And that, and now I'm down to 205 right now as, I, as this video gets published. So I've lost about 25 pounds this year maybe a little less. I fluctuate a little bit. I've had, I've had some like points of gain and I had to kind of come back like, you know, kind of like I took, you know, two steps forward, but then I took one step back kind of deal. So, so I ran into that a couple of times. And also I was really ill this year, a couple of times. Some people will know if they saw my like Movember video that I actually, you know, went through a bunch of GI tract issue problems and had to have a colonoscopy and had something removed during that colonoscopy and had to have that tested. And it came back benign, but had it had stayed there, it could have developed into colon cancer. That's a type of, of polyp it was. It was one that has risk for that. I had to do a bunch of genetic testing right now, going through a bunch of different medical shit right now to try to sort out my GI tract issues. Um, <clears throat> seems like I probably do have IBS, which I'm going to, and GERD, uh, G-E-R-D. Um, so I'm going to have to deal with that. And, and you know, I'm, I'm currently, like I said, going through genetic testing to see when I need to do another colonoscopy because it's probably something I have to do pretty regularly just to make sure that I don't let any growth spiral out of control and grow into something really dangerous. So I'm dealing with that and other stuff. So that, that's definitely been uh, a, a big like kind of hurdle in my weight loss was dealing with all that for a couple of months. And my goal was to get below 200 pounds before the end of the year. And as I'm recording this video, I have, I think, around 20 days or so left. And I'm currently like floating between like 205 and 208. Um, I probably could do it before the end of the year, and I'm certainly going to try. I'm still battling some sickness, though. I had, like, a really bad respiratory infection the past couple of weeks, and I'm still kind of dealing with it. That's why you'll notice I've had to, like, do some edits because I'm start coughing. It's been kind of bad, so and also my voice might sound a little bit off. Um, so I'm, I'm still kind of battling that. Uh, so I don't want to push myself too hard working out and then, you know, wreck myself because I need to kind of rest for my immune system's sake. But even if I don't get below 200 by the end of the year, I definitely should be able to by the end of January. Uh, and then after that, my next goal would probably be to get, you know, more towards like the, the 175 range, I think is where I'd be somewhat content. I'd have to kind of see, I mean, I am also working a lot on building muscle. I do a lot more lifting than cardio, to be honest. So I'm, I'm also kind of drifted more in that direction. So I'm not really a hundred percent sure where it's all going to end up. I know I at least want to get closer to like 175, 180 though. Um, obviously any, anything above that's just like overweight, uh, for sure for me. Uh, but I've made some progress. I'm going to keep doing that on top of, you know, keeping up with the esports stuff, stuff like that. It's been a great year. You know, as always, I've enjoyed working with all these different companies. I've enjoyed working with all the different, uh, other fellow commentators and hosts and analysts and, and whatnot. I enjoy working with all the different production crews. I didn't really have a single negative experience this year, really. Uh, there was a couple of mishaps here and there along the way, but for the most part, overall, I, I really enjoyed everything as I always do. And, and all the people are great. Um, and, and so hopefully I can keep working with the people I work with this year. You know, love working with DreamHack. It was great working with Starlighter in Kiev. Um, they even helped me out in a pretty big way in Kiev. I remember I got like really sick and actually had to go to a hospital there and they actually took really good care of me. Uh, so definitely appreciate them for that. And then um, you know, worked with a couple of smaller companies this year as well, like working with the, the world gaming people in Canada, uh, doing stuff with WESG and doing stuff with Zotac. And, and so it's great working with them. Hopefully I can continue to work with them going forward. Hopefully I can continue to work with people I worked with in the past, like when I did stuff with PGL and stuff like that. And I've done stuff with Face in the past, but I didn't this year. Maybe, you know, eventually that, that can change again. I've never really done an offline event with ESL, like for their ESL stuff or IEM stuff. So it'll be great to get to work with them at some point. We'll just have to see if that ever happens or materializes or not. And, and you know, I'm just going to keep putting myself out there and just really hope for the best. I'm going to continue to grind out, you know, doing my research like I always do to stay as knowledgeable as possible. And I'll keep doing content where I can. I'll, you know, keep pushing, 
and we'll just have to see where it goes. And again, eyes are open to maybe work in another game. I don't think I'd ever want to give up Counter Strike, but you know, working another game alongside Counter Strike could be very beneficial for you know stability's sake. Uh, continuing to try to make a career out of being a broadcaster. So anyway, just want to do a quick update. Hope you folks enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe for more content and catch you later.